everybody to Championship Monday. It is Wager Talk today. I'm Lawrence Presman, and right off the bat, we are going to do a deep, deep dive into the Purdue UConn game. Adam Trigger has a bet for us, and I purposely put him on this show today. He's never on Mondays, but Adam is so good at college basketball. Both Teddy and I want to hear his thoughts. We're also going to look at the Toronto Blue Jays. Mark Zeno coming on. Two Major League Baseball bets, and we're going to end the show with the wonderful Carmine Bianco, who's got a bet for us in hockey and one in Championship League Soccer. Byron Munich at Arsenal. Anyway, I'm Lawrence Presman. I sold four Bitcoins about 20 minutes ago, and then it went up. Teddy Covers is my co-host. Let's go! Adam, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. You know, I, I think I am pretty good at breaking down these games. Unfortunately, this season, my, my ability to pick winners was not nearly as good as it was last year. But we're at the final, and, you know, it, it, it probably could go either way. So I'm going to try to give a, a somewhat unbiased breakdown and what I would do in the in the final. Let's talk about the final for tonight. Obviously, the men's national championship goes tonight in Glendale, Arizona. Right now, looking at the Wager Talk Live odd screen, UConn's pretty much up to minus seven at most books. There are still a couple of books at six and a half. Total, 145 and a half, 145. The money's come for the under and the Huskies so far. How do you see tonight's game playing out? So, so, Teddy, you and I did a couple of different college basketball shows last week, kind of talking about UConn, and I, I made the point that they feel like the Patriots during their dynasty where it's, it's almost like you can ignore the number or it's like one of the, the, the scenarios where if you've been okay paying a premium to back them, you've been cashing tickets left and right. I don't think there's any question that once again, they're, they're forcing you to pay an inflated, you know, number or, or an inflated price to back UConn here. That being said, if you've done it all tournament long, you're kind of playing with house money at this point, right? Like they haven't, not covered a, an NTA tournament game since last year. To me, the number still matters. And as someone that's kind of been on the wrong side of this this year, I was all over UConn last year, but this tournament have been on the wrong side of it. Uh, I think the spread, I still make it more like three and a half. So if I'm just going off my numbers, uh, I, that points me to Purdue. But but there are reasons, uh, in my opinion, to, to like Purdue in this matchup. And I really do think you have to just approach it as, you know, it's 0-0 zero, zero again. Like, yeah, did UConn get there and cover Alabama in the end? Of course they did. But they still needed to hit five of their last six shots in the final four minutes of that game just to cover the number by two. At least if you got on it earlier in the week at 12, uh, that was the case. Needed to hit, you know, five of, of their final six shots. Uh, from after Sears hit the three from basically the logo to cut it to eight, UConn needed to hit five of their last six shots, including multiple threes, uh, to win that game by 14, which covered the number by two. As far as this matchup concerned, I think it's a, a little bit more of a stalemate. I think Purdue and UConn do a lot of the same things well. Uh, I think Edie negates Klingon and vice versa. Klingon is, is probably one of the few people in the country that can guard Edie straight up. So, you know, I think those two things might cancel out a little bit. They both like to play a similar pace. So to me, you know, if UConn can, I'm sorry, if Purdue can play through Edie and then get some open threes and knock down some open threes, I think they're going to have a great chance to hang around in this game. I also think it's worth noting that they really haven't shot the three particularly well yet, despite being number two in offensive, uh, number two in three point shooting in the country, 41.1%, and number three in offensive efficiency. So I do think there's paths to Purdue hanging in this game and at plus seven. And even if this goes to seven and a half, it's going to be tough for me to not you know, have a bat on the Boilermakers tonight. So I, I need to understand this, uh, Adam. You said that you're laying a – it's clear that you're laying a premium with UConn. All UConn's done is be an undervalued commodity in this tournament. All they were was an undervalued commodity in the Big East tournament. All they were down the stretch was an undervalued commodity. UConn obviously has covered every, turn, uh, every point spread in the tournament this year and last year. From the start of March Madness, I've got them at what seven and one ATS. From the end of February, I've got them at eleven and one ATS. What? I, I don't understand the concept. How is this team overvalued when all they're doing is coming in under? You know, they're they're 
they're playing better than the markets are, are, are telling us that they're supposed to play. All right. So I guess I'll, I'll counter your question with a little bit of a question. And my thing is like, it's, it's easy in hindsight to say they're undervalued. Okay. Like, you know, going back and looking at the full body of work, I guess now we can look and say, okay, well, you've been cashing tickets the entire time with, with UConn. But in my opinion, like game to game, that doesn't really make them undervalued. I think if you wanted to tell me that they were a little bit undervalued against Northwestern because Northwestern was really banged up and coming off of a, an overtime game to Florida Atlantic, I could get, I could live with that. But I, I, I would be, I, I can't really get with like calling UConn undervalued, laying 12 and a half to, to San Diego State, laying almost 10 to Illinois, laying 12 to Alabama. In my opinion, they're just, they're just covering premium numbers, which is like that doesn't make them undervalued. It just means they're finding a way to get there. So if I'm looking at this again, I still think that this number is is inflated. Does it mean UConn's not going to like close the game on another really good run and get there? No. But if you go back to the Alabama game, Alabama covered the majority of that game. There was a there was a point in time where they were tied. We knew they were going to have to hit shots to hang around, and they just went a little bit cold at the end. And UConn got there. So I disagree with them being undervalued. But are they cashing tickets? Of course they are, and I think that's kind of the uh you know the ultimate thing here do you want to just lay it with UConn and expect them to find a way or are you going to take the value with Purdue because in my opinion there's clear value on Purdue Adam and uh, not n- not to get into an argument here but I think we all define undervalued maybe a little differently if you cover seven eight ten fifteen uh spreads in a row you're undervalued regardless of what that line is the fact that it's a premium minus 11 and a half against Alabama and they cover it regardless of whether it's a premium minus 20 against whoever and they cover it. If they continue to cover game in and game out, the line is irrelevant. They are undervalued. With that said, I have a question for you and that is, uh, shouldn't we be looking you know, you like Purdue here. Shouldn't we be looking at maybe the first half? What we have seen with UConn, is there's value betting against them maybe in the first half, and then they come out and just lay the smack down. Uh, you prefer the whole game? Yeah, I, I prefer the whole game because I want to give Purdue a chance to hit shots here. I, I keep coming back to the last two games for Purdue. You know, Purdue hasn't shot the ball well in, in a while, right? Like, you go back to the Tennessee game, three for th- three for 15 from three. Go to the NCAA game, they only shot 40% from the field. So in, in, in relative to what Purdue's long-term numbers are, I mean, Purdue is a, also a top three team in offensive efficiency, and they've been an elite three-point shooting team all season. So I think I'd prefer – and then the other thing is this. Like, if Purdue is behind here, which the number, I guess, kind of suggests being that they're, they've made UConn a seven-point favorite, it, it, I would rather have the full 40 minutes to let their three-point shooting kick into gear because I do think if Purdue is hitting their threes, which – is not easy against UConn. UConn guards the perimeter as good as anyone, but Purdue can can hit shots, and if they hit a few threes, uh, I, I think they're going to at least be in position similar to Alabama to be in this game, and then what happens in that final stanza will probably determine you know who gets the money here. Well, I'll tell you something. Watching Purdue, this is an inside-out team. Very few left in the world today. So uh, if they start hitting threes, that's going to bring them closer to the perimeter, open up more uh, back-to-the-basket buckets from Zach. Otherwise, if he starts hitting those, then they're going to have to drop a guy back. Three-pointers start happening. We don't get to see teams like Purdue very often anymore. Uh, Let's turn our attention to baseball. Toronto Blue Jays, minus 115 against the Seattle Mariners. How are you betting this game? Yeah, so baseball has been going my way. Four straight winners heading into tonight. I have a 5% play. That's going to be my first 5% baseball play of the season. One of the games that that just missed for me, but I'll certainly be trying to find a way into this series, is the Blue Jays. Um, You know, listen, they they had as hard of a start to the season as any team. Uh, 10-game road trip while they renovated the Rogers Center. So, you know, typically teams aren't opening on 10-game road trips, and MLB really did them no favors. Sent them down to Tampa Bay, then to Houston, then to the Yankees. So as tough of a start of, of, that any team had to endure, 
And I think they're a little bit undervalued because of that. You know, the Blue Jays are a team that I personally am very high on this year. I think they have an outside chance to contend in the American League, especially as they collectively get healthy. Um, and so, you know, coming off of the series and looking at their offensive numbers right now, they haven't hit yet. But again, how much of that is playing on the road and playing on the road against some really good teams and quality pitchers? Uh, and I'm willing to sort of jump in now with the Blue Jays and expect that to come around a little bit as they get to play some games at home and, and some games against slightly easier competition. You know, you, you come into today, uh, you got Vlad Guerrero batting a buck 89. I mean, we know that's not going to last. One of the one of the best hitters in the game, he, he's certainly going to be better. And I think it goes overall for this Blue Jays team. Uh, I think, at least personally, I expect them to be better than what we saw, you know, in those first 10 games on the road against difficult teams. So that's the reason I want to jump in with them, uh, you know, and I will look for a spot to jump in for a client play in this series. I think one of the main reasons I held back here was one, you know, getting, you know, coming back off a 10 game road trip and then having them to play that first day, especially with no off day can be tricky. Uh, and then two, I, I just wasn't dying to go against Luis Castillo knowing he's kind of struggled. And I know that that's probably not going to be a long-term uh, thing for him. You know, you look at the 1.78 whip uh, through the first two starts, he'll certainly improve on that. Uh, you know, the 12 to three strikeout to, to walk ratio suggests that he'll improve on that. On the other side, though, you've got Jose Barrios. He's been awesome. He's responsible essentially for both the, you know, two of the four Blue Jay wins, and he's been by far the Blue Jays' best starting pitcher. And then you do have the home opener, a little bit of a of, uh, new feel to the Rogers Center. They moved some of the fans closer to the field. $400 million in renovation. So I guess the better bet for me here is maybe the Blue Jays series price. Uh, if you look and project this series out, it looks like you're going to get Kirby and then Gilbert on Tuesday and Wednesday. It's keeping that series price down. So you're actually getting the Blue Jays at minus 115 to take two of three against the Mariners at home. And, and I think they find a way to do that. Uh, I do lean their way tonight, but I will absolutely be looking for ways into the Blue Jays with this series. I'm much higher on them as than I am on the Mariners, and I think they find a way to get it done. So how do you feel about these home openers? Because one of these, you know, MLB mantras that you learned back in the day was beware the home opener. The team doesn't, you know, there's a lot of distractions off the field. And certainly when a team's on the longest road trip that anyone's taken to start the season because their field's getting renovated, the home opener maybe brings a little bit of extra distraction. Does that concern you here at all? Or is home opener a bet on situation in your mind? Teddy, it, it, the later they are, the, the less it, it matters to me. Like, I, I definitely think, you know, you, you have to take it into consideration a little bit when they're in the first week of the season. But once we've been playing ball now for a week and a half, I mean, I actually think the, the fact that it is their home opener maybe gives them a little bit of, of extra juice here uh, than it would, let's say, if they were coming off of a 10-game road trip in the middle of July and then coming back home. I think it would be a little bit of a tougher spot, maybe the fact that they get to come home to uh, you know what will probably be a very good crowd helps them out a little bit. Uh, but no, I don't. It, it, it's just I feel like it's more anecdotal than anything. You know, we, we remember it when it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So uh, I, it, it's not the the biggest part of my handicap. But again, it should always be taken in, into consideration. Um, you know, home road splits are, are very important in baseball. Adam Trigger joining us. We got Mark Zeno and Carmine Bianco still to come. Teddy's big game breakdown and the world famous, most delicious, incredible, always winning daily presidential address at the end of the show. Adam, you've got a 5% play up in baseball tonight. It is your first on the season. I wish you nothing but the best. I will be cheering like crazy for you. Uh, anything else going? No, if I do play Purdue, I'll, I'll tweet it out and I'll also post it to my Wager Talk page. So that'll just go up for free uh, at WTBuzz.at. And I've had four straight baseball winners to close out the weekend. Had the Cubs yesterday, even though it took forever. Uh, it was an easy win. And I uh, hope to make it five in a row tonight. And tonight will be my first five percenter of the MLB season. Uh, it'll be the only thing I have up for sale today. Uh, so go over to my page and get that, WT.Buzz.at. Brilliant stuff, Adam Trigger, everyone. Teddy covers. So last we spoke, well, last Wednesday, I was in betting hell. Well, it turned. I killed it. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, Sunday I went two and three. But Saturday, Teddy covers. I was on UConn 
and the under. A really risky proposition betting a, a favorite of that much and the under. I was at a birthday party, karaoke. Uh, I watched the game on my phone. Dude, uh, I mean, Jesus. I had 160 and a half. It ends at 158. I'm on minus 11. It ends at 14. I was freaking out. But I cashed them both. Had a 4-1 date with my clients. Uh, and guys, I'm on a 7-0 and NHL run. And I don't know if anyone's been tracking my daily presidential address, but I think offhand last week, I probably went like 15-2 and two or something. Like, honest to God, I think I won almost every single one. Um, I have a promo code to give out, and that is Eclipse69. I have a big play tonight myself on the national championship game. I'm up 50 units of profit in college hoops. I've seen it incredible. So uh, instead of buying my play tonight, use the promo code Eclipse69. Get seven days all access. I got a big NHL play coming tomorrow. I already know it. It'll go up in the next few hours once the lines are up. I have seen one line, but we got to wait till the lines settle. Anyway, use that promo code Eclipse69. Seven days, $69. My brother, I know you're sick of me already. I can see it in your face. What did we learn in the wonderful world of sports betting? So I had four plays yesterday for the clients. I've been uh -oh. running really good for weeks. All right. The MLB shortlist yesterday was Boston, Baltimore, and the Cubs. The Cubs won eight to one. The Red Sox won 12 to 2. Which one did I use? I used Baltimore. And they lost 3 to 2. The first run came on a double play grounder to end the inning. Nope. Throwing error, sacrifice, fly. Got in a run. No big deal. Second and third runs came in the bottom of the ninth. A game ending double play grounder. Oops. Bad throw. Two run score, and they lose. We'll call that a tough beat. NBA shortlist wasn't quite as good, but it was still a good day yesterday on the NBA shortlist. I had Orlando on the shortlist against Chicago. They won by 15. I had Sacramento on the shortlist against Brooklyn. They won by 30. I had the Raptors on the shortlist. Uh, they, by, you know, they blew out the Wizards and then hung on for the cover. I know the Suns were wrong, but after looking at the game closely, I was throwing it out anyway. So I end up on three NBA plays yesterday. The Knicks plus at Milwaukee. They won the game by double digits. That was fairly easy. Oklahoma City against Charlotte, minus. They led by double digits, and the Hornets got hot. OKC won by only three. That wasn't a right side. But I can get out of this stupid day with a push. All I need is a Spurs plus the six before Embiid was ruled out. The line closed at three. I get the closing line value trophy. And, of course, the Spurs lead the whole second half. They give up the tying bucket. Great play off the timeout. I'll give them credit. They give up the tying bucket with .2 seconds left. They lead the whole first overtime and allow another tying bucket with a two seconds left. They lead in the second overtime and then held scoreless the last three minutes of the game. Plus six, they lose by seven. So that's what it took for me to have a shitty day. I made wrong decisions on my shortlist in MLB, wrong decisions on my shortlist in the NBA, bad luck in two of the three losses. I'm brushing that one off, brother. <laughs> my streak yeah. is not ending just yet. 47 and 22 with the last 69 plays, plus 68 Brilliant. units, 24 and eight in college hoops, 75% dating back to mid-March. The NBA, 12 and 4 short term, 96 and 64, 60% since November. And of course, up well over 200 units of profit since 2022. Get on board, guys. TC 30 Day is your promo code. Get your 30 day all access pass, just 229. Take advantage of that right now. You get the national championship game winner tonight, but you don't need to do that because I'm going to give you my play in the national championship game for free in just a few moments. Stay tuned right here on Wager Talk today. Lawrence? Teddy, I'm going to come clean. I'm going to tell the world something nobody knows. So, and, and, so three years ago, I started the NBA season horribly. And I'm about three months in, and I can't pick my nose. I mean, it was horrific. I called Teddy on the phone. I'm like, dude, I had the war. I, 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 I'm seeing NBA so bad. It's so brutal. I don't know what to do. Teddy says, you know what, Prez? I'll give you my shortlist plays that I don't use. Why don't you try those and you use those? Right? I mean, that was really...
I remember that happened. I don't remember when it was, but I remember it happened. Three years ago. So I'm in the middle of an NBA season from hell. I don't know what to do. I call Teddy. He's like, I'll give you my short list. I think he went 50 and 14. Dude, and the plays live. he gave me were better than the plays he used. It was unbelievable. So I'm going to give you a piece of advice, Teddy. And this is advice that I'm so mad I didn't take, but I'm going to do next NHL season. Put your short list in for your clients. You don't have to put them in as plays. You don't have to rate them. Just at the bottom of your analysis, write short list. Plays that didn't make it. Put them in. Because I know your short list of NBA plays are probably better than almost anyone else's full list of NBA plays. So stick them in. Why not? Well, well uh, so... I will think about the best way to approach NBA for next year in the NBA offseason. I can't argue with what I've been doing in the NBA. The yeah, NBA has sure. been consistently winning. You know, I'm up more than 200 units of profit since 2022 in the NBA. So I don't want to mess with it too much, but we're always going to tweak. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, you know what the moral of my story was, Teddy? What's that? The moral? amount of incredible respect I have for your NBA plays that I was willing to to put my name, the best name in the industry, the strongest brand ever mm. in my house, I was willing to put my name on your plays. I didn't ask anybody else. It was all about you. So deep respect, my brother. Mark Zito joining us. And we got deep respect for this serviceman. How are you, Mark? Gentlemen, great to be with you as always. Um, I would like to just uh, add an addendum real quick because I know we're going to talk baseball, but to what Adam Trigger was saying, I don't know if the word is undervalued when it comes to UConn or overvalued. I think it's a price issue. I think they're overpriced given uh, the numbers that at least my numbers would the put same, together against. What is wrong with you me, guys? Me, That's the same me. damn so, thing. Yeah. I, I, so, I, just so, so Mark. Like, yeah. yeah. You, you got to explain to me how a team that keeps covering every game is is over is overvalued because that, that because, conceptually I just don't get it. But what either. you're doing is you're, you're connecting events that aren't connected. UConn covering against San Diego State is not connected to UConn covering whoever they played in the next game. I can't remember what it was. But the point is, is that these are each individual events, and so you have to price them individually. Sure, you will see a little bit of, for lack of a better term, inflation on numbers, given if a team is really hot, you pay a premium on them. But for the most part, when they start to play equal caliber opponents, because you're, you're seeing the same thing in the NBA. Every favorite against a bad team. The Celtics are laying 17. The Thunder are laying 14. These are overinflated, overpriced numbers against bad opponents that odds makers are asking you to pay a higher number on. There's no way the Celtics are 17 points better than anybody in the league. They're just not. They are like, if, if they look, keep covering that number. Okay, but the I point mean, is, you, is that. Mark, UConn has covered minus 13, give or take, I think nine games in a row. Every game that, in the no, tournament, each this year and last year. Like, year, like, right. like you row. can spin it any way you want, but when the Patriots covered those insane lines on their undefeated season, that meant the bookmakers undervalued them. UConn has covered 700 games in a row. That means they are, by definition, undervalued. You and, and Adam Trigger can spin it any way you want. But the facts okay. are, so are you the me, facts are, you are that the you bookmakers believe? have got the line wrong every single time to the betterment or the favor of UConn, i.e. undervaluing them. So, so you're telling me here that you believe that at least UConn should be a 13-point favorite in this game because they've covered the last 11 by at least 13? No, that doesn't. That, that's not true. That's not. That's, that's not, not what I said. Teddy. Well, okay, so then what should the number be for this game? Well, the number should the be... The question what... that we're asking, the question that we're asking, Mark, is very simple. Okay. Okay. Is UConn right now priced appropriately? Are they being priced too high? Or are they being priced too low? And 
based on results, there's only one answer. Right. And that's they've been priced too low. Yep. But I've had multiple people come on the show today and say, no, 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 forget the results. They're priced too high. And I don't understand that conceptually. That's why I'm asking. We're not, no one's mad at you. I want to understand what you're thinking. We love you, Mark. We love you. <laughs> I, I, look, I'm somebody who, when it comes to basketball and football, I make my own numbers, right? Like I, I, I put the work in to develop my own line based off of yep. what I believe the teams are. So that, for me, at least in my handicapping, will allow me to say, okay, odds makers agree with me or odds makers disagree with me on where it is. And then I have to figure out what the delta is. For the most part, like, again, I would have made the number against Alabama about nine and a half or 10. That one and a half point premium that I saw is what I felt like odds makers were going to do just because of the streak that you guys are talking about. But when I looked at that number and I looked at those two teams objectively and sort of weighed out power rankings and offense and defensive efficiency and things of that nature, yeah. I made the number smaller than what it was. So I Mark, felt like I was paying premium. Mark, we're going to get to baseball, but just for the record, yeah. nobody is suggesting that UConn is undervalued tonight or overvalued okay. tonight. We're saying they've been undervalued every game so far. Your number is on Purdue. I'm your saying number UConn's undervalued tonight because they've been undervalued the whole way. Fair enough. So I'll now we know what Teddy's big game breakdown is. Mark, no, I'm not, I'm not playing the side. I'm not stepping in front of Purdue with too many points. I, uh, fair enough. Uh, now we know Teddy's got a total. Mark, are you even needed? Am anyway. I even needed? Yes, well, I'm Teddy and uh, I. Are. Of course you're yeah, needed, you bro. You're Mark frickin' Zeno. Man with the biggest trap since Tom Hardy in Batman 3. Okay, Miami, first five. He's got great traps. Yeah. Although Warrior, Warrior is where Tom Hardy rock. That is one. If you guys have never seen the movie Warrior, that's a top 10 sports movie of all time. Miami, first five tonight. Hey, Zeus. Lazardo on the mound. They're playing the Yankees. Nestor Cortez Jr. How do we bet this game? I'm going to look to a first five. I'm not getting Miami's bullpen involved in anything. So I'm going to look to a first five here uh, <laughs> and take the Marlins. You know, one of the first things I noticed about this game, guys, just was some sort of comparative spreads with some other bad teams in Major League Baseball. So, you know, the Marlins got their first win. They're now one and nine. But if you look at some of their NL East uh, brethren who have struggled, the Washington Nationals are not much better than the Marlins, despite the early season records or anything else. But yet, the San Francisco Giants are minus 215 on the money line against the Nationals. The New York Mets also struggling quite well. The Braves, minus 205 against the Mets. And yet, the Yankees, one of the more popular and one of the more avidly bet teams in general, who are at home playing the Marlins, are only laying 146 on the money line against the Marlins, who just got their first win. So that sort of stuck out to me, and I began to do a little bit more investigating here, and I looked at it and said, okay, Lazardo, who's been very good in his, his two first starts, and his was very good last year. Uh, the only thing that's really hurt him this year has been the home run ball. He's only given up six hits between both starts, but two home runs were allowed, and that accounted for three of the five earned runs that he's allowed. He's still got a 0 0.97 whip through the first two games, and the Yankees also have the fourth highest strikeout rate against lefties to start the season. So – even though they are in the band box that's called Yankee Stadium, I'll trust Hastings Lizardo here through the first five innings. But I'm also fading Nesta Cortez, who I will tell you as a Yankee fan, he's not good. I don't care what anybody tells you. He had like a, a six-start run a couple of years ago where he struck out a lot of guys and everybody went gaga over him. He stinks. Uh, his first two starts, he's given up three runs in, in the first inning in each of the two starts. And even though he was slightly better at home last year, it's not a massive difference, not one that you should take note of. I know the Marlins haven't gotten off to a great start offensively, but Cortez can be hit by pretty much anybody. And given the price that I'm getting here with the Marlins on the first five to take the half run uh, at basically even money, I think Lozardo keeps the Yankees in check here uh, and, and, and the Marlins do enough uh, to get a run or two across here to get us a cover in the first five. So Marlins plus a half run first five uh, at, at minus 102, basically even money. Nestor Cortez, a starting pitcher that the betting markets don't trust a whole lot. No. Mark Zeno doesn't trust nope. a whole lot either. Looking at the Marlins' first five plus a half run. And again, you get that at basically even money. Well, let's talk about the Blue Jays and the Mariners, another uh, first five opinion that you have for today. You're looking at the total here, not the side. 
what do you want to do uh, with Castillo and Barrios uh, in the uh, well, first, uh, home first, opener? First in for a new uh, is that uh, the opener was at eight and a half and it was bet down, and yet we're still getting four and a half on the first five. So, you know, th- that, that helps us a little bit here. But Berrios has been very consistent in general, but he's been consistent at home and better than on the road. His ERA whip strikeouts per nine are all better at home. And he held opposing teams last year at the Rogers Center to just a 685 OPS. So that's really good. He's facing a Mariners lineup, by the way, guys, that is the highest K percentage in baseball to start the season at nearly 29%, which is insane. Think about it. Almost one out of every three batters is striking out when the Mariners are up at the plate. Luis Castillo, one of the more solid starters in Major League Baseball this year, a 3-3, uh, last year rather, a 3-3-4 ERA, 1.09 whip, averaged 10 strikeouts for nine innings and nearly four Ks per walk. So he has been a very good, dependable pitcher. He faced the Blue Jays last year in Toronto in late April, gave up just two runs in five innings. He's facing a Blue Jays lineup this year, guys, that's second to last in batting average in all of baseball at a buck 93. Not a lot of offense for either one of these teams to start the season. They're both bottom 10 in batting average, slugging percentage, OPS, and runs scored. We have two good starters on the mound here. Uh, first five under four and a half is the way to go. So this has gotten a little bit juicy. Now we're looking at four and a half minus a quarter. Uh, you willing to lay that juice? Uh, clearly the money the, the money showing for the under in this one, first five. Yeah, and, and, you know, look, I, I've learned my lesson from last year, guys, um, when it comes to, to baseball uh, in limiting the amount of juice I'm willing to pay. And really when I start to get to that 130 range is where I'm really starting to say, okay, I'm good enough to walk away here. Uh, but given the starters on the mound, um, they're, they're, I feel like there's enough outs here where as long as they keep the ball in the ballpark and by all accounts with the way these two teams have started the season, they should. Um, I, I'm okay with laying the juice in this spot. Mark Zeno, everybody. Uh, guys, Mark's got a 5% play up in college basketball. He's on a 10 and 5 run. Uh, anything else you got going, brother? Actually, guys, two plays in the national championship game tonight, including a 5% best bet. Uh, another 4% play. There's a baseball play loaded up there as well. So it's a three for one. Huge deal. WT.buzz slash MZ. Guys, getting made an insane run this past week. Now 15 and four uh, over the last 19 plays over the course of the last week, including a 10 and 0 stretch, guys, that we were on in the middle of the last week. So trying to stay hot here. I think we get it done with another 5% winner tonight. Cash three out of my last four 5% plays in college hoops. So we'll get another one done tonight. Boom. Mark Zeno, thanks for joining us. Carmine Bianco still to come. Teddy's big game breakdown. If we get to 100 likes, my daily presidential address, Teddy, Purdue, UConn, what do you got for us? Big game breakdown. Let's talk national title Monday night. This is a client play for me, so don't buy it. You'll get it here for free. That being said, I do want to give you guys a promo code. TC30DAY is the promo code. Again, TC thirty day at checkout. Going to get you a thirty day all access pass for just two twenty nine. We've been running real good for quite some time. Not a bad time to take advantage of that offer today. Again, TC thirty day. Sorry, TC thirty day at checkout. Now, what have we seen so far here in the last couple of rounds? Well, Sweet Sixteen Elite Eight games, seventy five percent to the under two national championship semifinal games, both cashed unders. UConn has cashed an under in every game in this tournament. (laughs) The Boilermakers uh, have uh, also been, sorry, and UConn nine and one to the under the last 10, including six straight. They've held seven uh, of the last nine opponents, 60 points or less. Purdue, same story, averaging what? The opponents averaging 61 points per game in regulation uh, during the seven games since the start of the Big Ten tournament. So we have two teams trending under. We have a tournament that's trending under. Then we think about the matchups here. Is it going to be easy for ED tonight in the low post? It is not. Is it going to be easy for Purdue to be hitting open looks from three-point range? Will they have an ice cold from three the last couple of games? It is not. Is UConn going to be able to get easy transition buckets? They are not. (laughs) You know, the Boilermakers get back on defense. Is this a good venue for shooters? It is not. (laughs) Uh, You put all these factors together, it's a no-brainer. All right. 
Under, under, under. And look, I'm not loading up on this. Certainly, when you're talking about a total that's already been bet down, there were 148 and a half, 149s at the open. Now we're looking at 145 and a half, 145. It's not a load up game, but you're looking for action on Monday night. We all are. We're all going to get involved in this title game. Under is the way that I'm looking here. To client play for me, and you guys get it for free. There's your big game breakdown. Back to you, Mr. Prez. Teddy covers only 51 likes, and I, I'm, I'm shocked, honestly. We've got uh, 250 people in. Literally one out of five people hit the like button. Uh, I don't know if you're betting my daily NF NHL uh, plays that I give out on the show, but I swear to you, I've barely lost one in two weeks. I mean, <laughs> last week it was the most incredible run in that daily presidential address I've maybe ever had. I got two NHL plays I want to give out later on, on the show. But guys, man, like, if you just take one second, boom, boom, it was like a millisecond, boom, and, and, and then you hit the like button, and boom, Teddy, do it, give, show us what they have to do. There you go. There you go. Carmine Bianco joining us, everyone. Carm, we played a poker yesterday. You got sucked out on, right? I don't know where that came from, but uh, well, didn't didn't, no, didn't I, you lose a bad I, one? Didn't you hit your set and then some guy rivered you or something? Yeah, yeah no, uh, uh, pocket eights versus ace nine. He was ahead, uh, you know, pre flop. I hit an ace on the turn. He hit an eight on the river to to make a set. It happens. It's uh, poker. I, I wasn't ahead pre flop, so uh, I'm uh, I'm not you know. I'm fine with the result. I grabbed my stuff, went home, and watched the Dallas Stars and the Colorado Avalanche instead. So great game. Uh, it was kind of a lose-win situation. Uh, loved the game last night. Carm, how good are but the congrats. Dallas Stars? You chopped. You Dallas Stars are one of the best teams in the league right now. Uh, Ralph had posted uh, a stat uh, yesterday. Uh, about uh, an angle where I think teams were 21. Uh, Colorado was like 20. It was a stat 21 and 0 or 24 and 0 uh, teams coming in um, uh, on like one day's rest or no day's rest, uh, playing in ele uh, elevation in Colorado. Um, and uh, Colorado was the play. I, I took Dallas. Um, I get it. Those stats are very helpful. But it's the eye test for me this late in the season. And uh, the Dallas Stars are playing extremely good hockey. They're off a bad loss. Uh, yeah. The start uh, uh, previous against the uh, Chicago Blackhawks of all teams. And I knew they would bounce back, and they did. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm super impressed with this team. So much depth as well. And thank you, Karim. Yes, I chopped yesterday in the poker tournament at three. Second chop in a row. None of that matters. Thursday, I start in Montreal. Uh, World Poker Tour will be there. Uh, so I start my real poker on Thursday. Um, much prefer to chop there than at a house with 30 people in it. Carmine, let's get straight into it. NHL Vegas playing Vancouver. And listen, hats off to both these teams. Nobody expected anything much from Vancouver coming into the season. They're number one in their division. Uh, they're, they've real, they've played very consistent all season long. Very similar to my NHL uh, bets, if you will. Um, and hats off to the Vegas Golden Knights. Outstanding start. Shot the bed for two months. Made incredible acquisitions at the trade deadline. And really are a team that I don't think anyone wants to play. Tonight they play each other. I like Vancouver, and I'll explain why later. Where are you going in this game? Uh, I don't like Vancouver in this game. I talked about this game earlier uh, on, on Puck Time this morning with Andrew, and Andrew's on Vancouver as well, too, and I get it. Um, but it, it, this is one of those ones where I think uh, – First of all, Vancouver's got the number one seed right now in the Pacific, uh, but the Oilers are right behind them, uh, three points back with the game in hand, and uh, Vegas could could end up falling. Uh, sorry, uh, Vancouver could end up falling into that number two seed and having to play Vegas in the first round of the playoffs. This is the thing with with Vancouver is 
Um, they're starting to stumble of late. And a lot of it has to do with uh, Casey DeSmith is their goalie right now. He's a fill-in for Thatcher Demko. Demko uh, is still injured, but did come off the long-term injury reserve this past weekend. But he's not going to play for another week or so. They might get him in for the last two, last couple of games just to give him some time to get back in there. And when, when you're missing a goalie who is 34, 13, and 2 uh, with a 247 goals against average, you take that guy out of the lineup and you put in your backup, he is going to get a workload that he is not used to. You look at uh, you look at the games for Vancouver of late, and you can look at their last 10 games. They are 5-5 five and five the last 10 games. Their wins have come against the Arizona Coyotes, the Anaheim Ducks, the Calgary Flames, the Montreal Canadiens, the Buffalo Sabres. Do you know who those teams are? They're all teams on the outside looking in who won't be in the playoffs this season. <laughs> last game out, they lose to... Um, the LA Kings. Now you look at Vegas. Vegas seven two and won their last ten. But the thing I like about this is Vegas lost a game in Arizona uh, that they led four one in the third period, and uh, Arizona scored six goals to win seven four. Those are the games that you have to draw a line through, because you can look at the analytics of that. Six goals were scored on zero point six of xG, which means. They were bad goals. Uh, there was deflections. There was an empty netter. Uh, too many people put stock in the final score without looking at the analytics of the game. Uh, and and that clearly shows that uh, it was an unfortunate loss, but it's one you got to draw a line through. Vegas earlier, were, uh, this line went from uh, minus 120 from Vancouver up to about 125. And Vegas was plus 105, and I grabbed them at plus 105, and now it's back to 120. And I'm seeing some books at minus 115 now. It's not going to be long before you're going to have to pay a little bit of VIG on uh, on the Golden Knights if you want to take them tonight. I think Vegas is the right play here, and uh, and I took the plus money. You can get them at even money right now. I think uh, that's the right play. And I'm going to give you one player prop on this one that I gave out on today's show. Jack Eichel, over three and a half shots on goal. He has gone over his number in 15 of his last 20 games. And that's minus 130 on that number. And in three games against Vancouver this season, he has six, six, and seven shots on goal. He can make it 4-0 tonight. Four shots on goal gets us a win uh, in that player's prop. We've got just a few moments left here with Carmine Bianco, wt.buzz backslash CB. Carm, let's talk some Champions League quarterfinals. Bayern Munich and Arsenal. Bayern Munich, a big dog in this one, plus 350. Arsenal, minus 140. The draw in the plus 300 range. Total sitting at two and a half. Juice to the over. There are some threes out there. What do you want to do with this Champions League quarterfinal battle between Bayern Munich and Arsenal? Teddy, uh, minus 140 is a good price, I think, on Arsenal. It probably could be a little bit bigger, but there's an aura that follows this Bayern Munich team that uh, that they're one of the top cl- clubs. Uh, this is the first time in 12 years they are not going to win their domestic league uh, title, the Bundesliga. Bayer Leverkusen have, has run away with the title there. And there's that preconceived notion that every time these two teams meet in the Champions League, that uh, Bayern absolutely runs over Arsenal. And they have uh, a ton of 5-1 score lines, but those are all 2017 or earlier. Different players, different teams, um, and, and different coaches. This Arsenal team is very well coached. Arteta is a former assistant coach to Pep Guardiola at Man City. He's got them playing the same style possession um the best defense is a good offense and this is a team that right now are tied at the top but uh, of the premier league but they're the number one team right now a 51 goal goal differential they've only allowed 24 goals in champions league this year three games at home won all three of them by a 12 nothing uh goal differential and one playoff game against porto that, that they won one nil they are a very good team and then you look at bayern and, and, and Bayern struggling. They've lost uh, their last couple of games. They lost to to um, Bundesliga debutants uh, Heidenheim this past weekend. Two nothing lead turned into a three two loss. Their coach Thomas Tuchel is he could very well be canned at the end of this game. They're going to let him go at the end of the season. But uh, if they lose this game by margin, by a couple uh, by two or three goals, he may not be on that plane going back to Germany for leg two of uh, of this quarterfinal uh, tie. 
I'm taking Arsenal here. I'm taking the team that's in form, playing extremely well, and putting aside that aura or that preconceived notion that every time these teams play, that uh, Bayern runs over them. This is a different Arsenal team, uh, and uh, they have a winning culture there. And at minus 140, I'll lay that. Carmine Bianco, outstanding stuff. Carmine, I, I, I've been watching the Man City documentary on Netflix. If you guys want to see a new uh, an impressive style of coaching, Pep something or other, uh, I don't know if you've seen this, Carm. All this guy does is give his players love. They they come into the dressing room down one nothing at halftime. Guys, I love you. You're playing incredible. Keep going. Love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I mean, it, totally opposite of anything we've ever seen before. Uh, just amazing documentary. What do you got to promote, bro? Yeah, well, he's got a team where he he, uh, he could feel the second team from his bench and still finish top four in the Premier League. It's oil money. It's You can buy the best players, and that's what they've done. Uh, Lawrence, three plays up for tonight. I just gave you guys one of them. It's a prop play, the one on Jack Eichel. Two other plays. Uh, one is a side total, uh, a side play, and then another player's prop. Uh, fantastic run through the weekend, 7-1-1 one one in NHL. Uh, a couple of 5% players, winners last week, and on the weekend, uh, six of the last seven have cashed. Uh, very good run, plus 44 units since the All-Star break, uh, January 1st in the NHL, which is number one at Wager Talk. And we're going to roll into the uh, rest of the regular season, 10 days and the playoffs, and uh, look to add some profits to it. There we go. Thanks for joining us, Karma. It was great seeing you yesterday. Teddy covers. Let's hit refresh. 102 likes, Daniel son. Cue it up. Hey guys, it's time for your uh, daily presidential address. There are two NHL games today, and I got bets for you on both of them. Before we get into that, I do want to make mention I've got uh, two promos up. I just got a third, a second one sent to me right now, and I would really take advantage of this. I mean, this is how you win buying plays. Is you know, one of them is Eclipse sixty nine, seven days, all access, all my plays for only $69. The next no coupon code required, just go straight to my package, is my 30-day all access. You get that. It's regularly $299. It is now $239. And I'm absolutely rolling right now. I had a terrible Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and since then it's been outstanding for all my clients. Um, so take advantage of that. Let's play long-term. Let's do it together. So much fun and very stressful for me personally when we do it together. Okay, Pittsburgh going into Toronto. There's a 50% chance I will be at that game tonight. I'm just waiting uh, to see if my friend's wife wants to go. He chose her first over me, which is really weird. I even offered him a reach around. Uh, anyway, I like the over in this game, Toronto and Pittsburgh. And Look, hats off to the Pittsburgh Penguins. They have made a run. It has been impressive. Won four in a row, six to seven. They're one point out. But this run has seen them score a ton of goals in their last eight games. Five, four, six, five, three, three, four, four. They have not gotten less than three goals in eight straight games. Toronto is not some defensive juggernaut. They're going to get three on Toronto tonight. And the Leafs. This is a team that consistently scores three or more goals. Uh, in their last nine games, four, one, six, three, five, three, one, six, seven. Only twice in their last 10 have they scored less than three goals. I don't love six and a half. I did take them on the Edmonton Oilers game on Saturday and we cashed. I will do it again here. Take Pittsburgh and Toronto over the total of six and a half. Now, when you look at this Vegas Golden Knights and Vancouver game, you know, kudos to Vegas, really turned their season around, won three of their last four and six of their last eight games. They did lose to Arizona. And I like Vancouver here, and I'll tell you why real quick. The bottom line is this Vegas team, they've got their wild card spot well in hand. They're going to the playoffs. They're going to likely finish third in their division. And I feel like emotionally they're going to be on a come down. I think Vegas might be a bet against team moving forward for the next few games. 
Uh, I just feel like you can only keep your emotional intensity so high for so long. Uh, plus, Vancouver, they are coming off of a loss coming back home. It's a short number for this home team. Take the Vancouver Canucks. Teddy, best of luck tonight on your college basketball play. Guys, grab my 4% college hoops play tonight. My brother, we'll see you tomorrow. Take us home. Yeah, before we let you go, though, I want to let you know there is a live poll question in our YouTube shorts chat. Which of these would you bet on tonight's National College Basketball Championship? UConn, Purdue over, under right now. UConn is the team that's attracting the most attention. Check that out in our YouTube, YouTube shorts chat right now. Thank you so much for watching Wager Talk today. We'll do it again tomorrow. Same time, same channel. 9 a.m. here on the left coast. Noon for you back east. Please tell your friends. Between now and tomorrow's show, enjoy the title game. And best of luck with all your wagers.